Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and this is 10 questions to ask yourself if you're an INFP and you're looking to start dating. So I made this video both for INFPs that are just getting into dating and for INFPs that are already happily dating but want to feel more fulfilled in their relationship or want to get more out of love. So with no further ado, let's go to question number one. Question number one, what can you offer your partner by being genuine and true to yourself? What INFPs have that is so good when it comes to relationships and dating is self-awareness. Obviously, we're all starting out, we're all trying to understand ourselves, and when we're young, we don't really get ourselves. But INFPs tend to at least dedicate time to trying to figure out themselves. You're actually asking yourself the right questions. You're actually thinking about your own needs and your own identity and who you are. You're taking the first steps, and that's already a good starting point if you are looking to get into a relationship. Because we are better as partners, as lovers, as daters, uh, when we are true to ourselves and when we know who we are and what we want in a relationship. INFP's love language is authenticity. And that means the first question to ask yourself as an INFP is, what can I offer my partner by being genuine and true to myself? What is it that are unique qualities in me that I have, that I possess naturally, that I will give people who are around me? What is it I give people? What is it I teach people? What is it I, uh, what energy do I give to people just by being who I am? If you can understand that energy and if you can know that energy in yourself, you can also know what it is that is valuable and attractive about you to other people. With love, there is a really interesting conundrum and that is the more we love someone, the more we feel a desire to take away from our own qualities and our own worthiness of love. We love somebody so much that we assume that we ourselves must be inferior to the other person. We idealize another person and in doing so we also take away from ourselves. If they are so beautiful, so wonderful as people, then we in comparison must be such worthless, such unworthy people. But if you can understand yourself and who you are and what is lovable about you, you can be more fulfilled in relationships and you can make other people feel that they are able to fulfill and meet your needs too. A lot of INFPs get caught into fantasizing about love and about dating and about finding a dream match or a dream partner. Now before we get into the video, I have the perfect dating app for you INFPs that want to start dating. Type Match app is the best app in the market for people that love the MBTI, that love personal growth, that want to take fun quizzes and meet up with other people with similar per or different personality types. Here you can meet people based on compatibility, friendships, as well as potential love interests. Type Match app is free, but also has really cool premium gold membership features that I really encourage you to check out. So if you're curious about this, check out the link down below or check out App Store Type Match app to download and start dating right now. We're going to mess up and we're going to make mistakes and we're not going to always be uh, the TV show romantic comedy ideal that we see projected in the world. Neither are the people we meet. So are you prepared to accept and forgive and uh, live with the fact that other people are not this rom-com fantasy. And that brings us to question number three. What are you prepared to forgive other people for? INFPs value authenticity and forgiveness is something that comes naturally to most INFPs. INFPs are forgiving, understanding people because they know that they themselves are not perfect, because they are themselves modest and understanding, they can also understand and tolerate other people for being the same. You can understand and accept that other people are not always going to be amazing or that people are going to make mistakes. So, but what is good to have is just an idea of how far are you willing to extend that forgiveness and what are you prepared to forgive and what are you prepared to accept I think these questions are good to think about because it will also keep you from uh, finding yourself feeling betrayed or lost or used in a relationship. You don't want to end up feeling worse about yourself for dating somebody else. You don't want to end up feeling like you're not valuable enough or that you don't matter enough uh, just because the other person you're dating doesn't treat you well or doesn't give you the love or respect or authority that you deserve as an individual. Question number four. What do other people like about you? 
I mean, you might know yourself to some extent things you are good at and things that you bring to the table and things that you like about yourself, but chances are you don't. Chances are you have no clue about who you are or how other people perceive you or how other people experience you. So go on an ego trip and ask. Ask other people what they like about you. Ask people to write down three positive adjectives about you. Like, uh, Ask your friends and family members, what do you find lovable about me? What do you find attractive about me? What do you find... Uh, my son uh, is funny about me what do you like or enjoy when you are around me what do i bring to the table just get that love get that validation get that uh, you know appreciation that you we all deserve and of course don't be afraid to give back to the people uh, for doing the same thing show them what you love about them and find out what they love about you that's already going to help you know your strengths and what it is you bring to the tinder dating market or wherever you plan to find your match now we're going to get into the more difficult questions. And that's question number five. How do you plan to communicate your inner world as an INFP? What I see with INFPs is INFPs can struggle in relationships to put words on their own feelings and experiences. And sometimes INFPs are attracted to the idea of a mind reader, somebody that will naturally get everything about you. You'll never have to explain anything you feel. They'll understand your boundaries, your needs, your feelings better than you do. They all somehow magically know what not to say or what not to do around you and what to do and what you expect from them without you having to say anything. But of course that's not true. Most people will have no clue to who you are, what you need, especially if they're just getting to know you. So how can you communicate your feelings and needs to other people better? I and peace, while there are many qualities that are amazing, struggle the most with communication, articulating needs and experiences and values. So do put down energy and effort into doing these things. In meeting other people, when meeting up with other people, when dating, share your values. Try to make a note. These are things that are important to me and these are things that I want in relationships. These are things I've had in previous relationships that I don't want in the future. You know, let people know just, oh, he wants that and he's looking for that and oh she cares about this and this is important to her and then that way you can already find out early on if you're going to have a good match with another person or not and finally question number six how can you help how can you help your partner understand your unique works and ways of being Chances are the people you date are not going to be the same type you are. And chances are, even if they would be the type you are, they're not always going to understand everything you do or why you do things a certain way or why you feel a certain way. INFPs are original people with original, unique identities and ways of expressing themselves and ways of living. You know, your lifestyle might weird people out. It might be different what people are used to, how you live when you get up in the morning, what you do first in the morning, you know, uh, how you communicate, you know, what, how you dress. All those things are things that other people are going to be like, oh, why is he doing that? Or why is that happening? And so how do you explain and uh, communicate your quirks and needs and who you are to other people in a way that is open-minded and accepting, you know, the same way as you expect to be understood and respected by other people for who you are. The same acceptance and open-mindedness you have to have with other people for who they are. And so are you able to live with the fact that other people are not going to share your rhythm or flow or way of talking or dressing? Uh, question number seven. Are you looking for a partner that is just like you or are you looking for a partner that is different from you? I think this is one of the best questions to know when you're starting out dating. I tend to find that in the beginning phase when people are young, they tend to look to a match that is just like them. They're looking for somebody that will dress and talk and live and breathe just the way they do. But the older we get, the often the more different kind of a partner we tend to look for. And I find that older INFPs tend to gravitate more towards other personal types that might share some similar values and interests, sure, but that can have different ways of dressing or communicating or acting or interests or hobbies that you don't always have. So as an INFP, ask yourself, in what phase are you right now? Are you looking for a match that will be just like you, somebody that will help you understand yourself better? Or are you looking for somebody that will challenge you, somebody that will offer you different perspectives, somebody that will break you out of your head when you get stuck, somebody that will question you when you do things that are just weird or different or stupid? <laughs> you know, what kind of a partner are you looking for? 
And why are you dating right now? Are you dating just to have fun? Are you dating because you're looking for a serious long-term relationship? Are you dating because you are looking for, you know, a connection with an equal or a soulmate or somebody that is just like you? Or are you looking for somebody that will uh, help you see and explore new things and new places and new interests that you didn't already know that you had? Question number eight. What are you prepared to compromise in a relationship? True this, there are things in relationships and dating that are fine to compromise on. You know, everything from diet to uh, when to get up in the morning to, you know, uh, uh, work-life balance. You know, all those things are open for discussion. You know, do you have things that you'll naturally want to and need to compromise on in relationships. You'll want to uh, find a similar rhythm and you'll want to uh, find a similar way of doing things and making agreements and communicating, you know, small things that just are important for the relationship to work and to function. But there are also things that you don't want to compromise on, like uh, uh, moving to a place or that you would never want to live in or uh, having kids if you don't want to have kids or uh, not having kids when you want to have kids. You know, those things that are truly essential to what you want in life and what is really important to you. So if you can establish early and write down a list for yourself, okay, what is it I can compromise on and what is it I can't compromise on, then it's going to be a lot easier. It's also going to be uh, eye-opener because sometimes it's going to be annoying. You know, why do I have to uh, clean up to myself every time I do this at home? And why does my partner find this annoying when it's such a small thing? And why do they care about that or that? But in reality, you know, if you know that this is something you can compromise on, yeah, then it is. Uh, if it is on your compromise worthy list, yeah, then it is compromise work. And then you say, yeah, this is something I can do. And this is something I would like you to do in return. You know, then you can have an actual discussion with another person about, okay, what is it we can work together with? What is it we can get past, you know? But if you get to the uncompromised work you list, uh, things that are uh, dead musts for you in a relationship, yeah, then you can have to have more serious conversations. Like, how important is this really for me? And how much does this really matter for me? And how uh, am I going to get past this or how are we going to get past this and that brings us to question number nine are you prepared to get out of your comfort zone i mean you might already have a life that you're pretty comfortable with a steady harmony a balanced life you know uh, it might not be the best life in the world or the most exciting or thrilling life but you have a life you have things you do in a day you know a routine a work or something that is fine for you you know but in relationships we might sometimes be required to go out of your our comfort zones, you know, to try things our partners care about, to uh, do things that we don't want to do or that we don't normally do, or to explore places that are different from us. You know, that will open you up to overwhelm. INFPs are often highly sensitive people, and that means a lot of time you want change in comfortable doses. You want uh, things to feel natural and easy. You want uh, things to not overwhelm you or to stress you, or to pu you don't want to feel pushed to do something you don't. But Sometimes uh, you're going to have to compromise on that aspect of yourself. You're going to have to say, okay, I will do this, but I will need time to recharge after. And this is something important to my partner. So I will be prepared to compromise on this or go and do it and try it. Maybe it will even be fun. Maybe it will be great, you know. Uh, but I will understand that this is going to challenge me and I might be a bit anxious or a bit worried. They, uh, they might need to hold my hand a bit through the process and guide me through the loops. I might need to watch a video to understand it better, you know. <laughs> I might need to prepare a bit or understand the situation a bit in advance, you know. There are things that uh, you might need to do that will feel uncomfortable. But uncomfortable is not always painful. Uncomfortable is not always the same as negative or bad. Uncomfortable is just uncomfortable. But you can find that your comfort zone can bend. You'll find that there are things that scared you in the beginning that are natural to you now. You'll find that there are jobs or goals or places that might uh, be frightening at first, but are super fun and thrilling. There might be things that will stress you out in the beginning, but that will feel super easy and relaxing once you get into it and your clothes are a bit warmer and you feel a bit more comfy in your skin. So, with a relationship comes a natural need to go out of your comfort zone. And if you're not prepared to do that, chances are the relationship will stagnate or will not progress. Finally, question number 10. Are you prepared to have fun with another person? You know, are you prepared to 
uh, let go of yourself a bit and your own ego and your own needs and uh, your own situation and to just laugh at the situation with another person, to just have fun with somebody else, to just do things that might feel different or weird or unusual to what you normally do, but can be amusing or different, you know. Are you prepared to just have fun with somebody else and to let loose and to relax your shoulders, you know, <laughs> because the dating is not supposed to uh, be a war or conquest situation. You're not here to fight anybody. You're not here to prove anything to anybody. You're here to just have fun and, you know, to relax with somebody else and find somebody you can open up to and find somebody that uh, you can just uh, uh, enjoy your time with, you know, even if it's uh, sitting back to back on the couch and reading together, you know, even if it's just uh, uh, something like uh, uh, learning to have fun in silence together, you know, even if it's uh, going out and doing something really adventurous, you know, uh, relationships should first and foremost be fun and natural and relaxing, you know, that's why we date, that's why we uh, seek partnerships, you know, somebody that we can have fun with, somebody that we can relax with. Finally, these were my 10 questions for all you INFPs that are looking to start dating or INFPs that are dating. My question for you is, what was the most important thing you needed to do in order to really meet somebody or in order to really connect with uh, somebody else? Feel free to share your experiences as an INFP dating in the comments down below and I hope to see you guys in the next video.